All right, so we got our template uh, fitted and I did go ahead and trim that down and I went ahead and drew out my borders. Now, I was gonna just keep rock and roll in this video and I was like, well, maybe somebody doesn't know how to easily draw out the borders. So let me go over it just in case you don't know how to get that border where it's nice and that even. So take your tape measure and what I did is my flange from here to here is three quarters. And like I said, I wanna times that by two so that I can center my uh, screws into here into the flange or get them close to here and then center the lexan screws way into here um, or even right here i just want to have plenty of meat to work with so three quarters times two is an inch and a half so take your tape measure measure inch and a half so i have just checkpoints randomly if you can see them little dots uh, like this okay so just random checkpoints that i have all around it miss that one uh, there's one and then the curves i have you know, one or two checkpoints, uh, just the reference. But then take your Sharpie, and if you've ever done sheetrock when you were younger, which I did do, or in your life, you know, hold your Sharpie like this, get your depths selected, and you're running your, your finger along the edge. Make sure you have gloves on. But then you can just pull it like that, okay? And you can just draw it. And you can go forward if you want. It's a little harder, but normally it's easier to drag it like that, okay? And when you get to your current, your corners, you literally do the same thing. So if you're dragging like this and your finger's touching, finger's always gonna be touching the edge of the metal, okay? Then as you go around the corner, as long as you keep everything firm, it should just go roll like that, okay? So now all we gotta do is go back and cut all of this inside out, get all this inside out, and that will give us our flange. All right, and to cut out your border, what you're gonna do is take a drill bit which I used a step down bit, you know, like a normal one from Harbor Freight, okay? And you just drill a hole in the corner, that way you can get your saw saw, or your saw saw, your jigsaw blade started, you know, and you can run your jigsaw blade all the way to that corner, and then you can run your jigsaw blade all the way around this pass, because you want to go into curves all the way around, and that will drop your center out. Alright, so you can see what we got. There's our frame. Pretty cool. So as you can see in the video, I kept moving clamps around. Basically, uh, these 2x4s are wedged down in your saw horses. I'm sure y'all have seen these from like Lowe's Home Depot. And then I've got this one turned on its side. And you can move this one basically like this, okay? That way your aluminum's here and you, can, you have a supporting, you know, it's supported to get that cut. And then when you get to do these end cuts, you know, you could put a board across like this where it's pretty close to get supportive. And then you just use your clamp so that you don't have to sit there and fight it with your hands. So there's our window frame. Pretty cool. I don't know if y'all uh, thought that's what it was going to look like or not, but that's it cut out. So we're going to get this thing put in place. Okay, now all we're going to do is just take a file and go around and just gently clean up the inner edge. I cleaned the outside up with a flat wheel, but now that this stuff's so flimsy, I'm just going to take a file and gently clean all the edges. So make sure you do that so you ain't got no sharp uh, the, uh, burrs on the inside. All right, and that's what we're ending up with, you know, that's with it in. So now you can kind of hopefully catch my drift. Now we're going to rivet this in place to the car body and then our Lexan will actually get screws through here. That way, again, the whole point of this is so that your screws are not really close to the end of the Lexan to make it stronger. If your screws are more in here, it's way, way less likely to crack. Like a hole way in here is not gonna crack nowhere near as easy as a hole near the edge. So the farther away you can get your screw space, the better. Um, and the aluminum is gonna be easier to drill into, meaning what my plans are is to drill this, countersink this, and then use wood screws uh, you know, pre-drilled aluminum and a wood screw should uh, bite the aluminum, you know, enough to pull this down um, where you don't have to do anything crazy and then we should be able to just rivet this outside in is my goal. But hopefully YouTube uh, doesn't, you know, give me a strike or anything for language or bad words or anything, but it's starting to look more like, you know, the R word. Um, I'm more like a race car, so I know that's a horrible wor wor word but that's what it's starting to look like as far as for the silicone I just got back from lowe's and also picked up these i'll be using these stainless uh, steel uh, six and a half inch screws 
to screw in the plexiglass to the aluminum track and then I'm going to use this to uh, silicone the aluminum track to the car. So the uh, uh, Lexan to the aluminum will get this. So it's these uh, foam window sill. Um, so I'll take you all along as we do this and show you everything, but I'm gonna get some holes just drilled and some Lexan set or some silicone set in here and get this all held in place. That way I can lay my Lexan in here and start uh, drilling out my holes. Right, we got our track in and you can see now it's just a lot better you got something to work with whereas before you know you had just that little tiny track uh, that would go to right there where the rivets are at and then you had the headliner folded around it and you just had a lot going on there's no way that you were actually going to get anything to stick be a decent seal so this thing is really solid like for the most part like it's really solid being it's riveted so much around it um, I think I did mess up though um, so word of advice my screws, I think they're going to be too short. I think I'm going to be back at the hardware store in the morning. Um, which is fine because we can't put screws in tonight anyway because I have to paint the border. I was thinking going through the Lexan and through this. This is the reason why I went with a half of an inch. But I actually have to go through a good half an inch or three quarters of foam. Uh, I think half an inch of foam. So an eighth of an inch of Lexan, half an inch of foam, and an eighth of an inch of... Um, aluminum puts you at pretty much three quarters so I should have got three quarters long screws so we'll see if these halves will work I don't think they will but um, we'll see and if they don't I'll go to the hardware store and the, your track is going to be uneven and wavy it's just the nature of the seal and how it twists and pulls and turns I don't know if you can really see it um, so that's another reason why you want a little bit longer screw so that areas that are longer you know can do it but you don't want it so long it's hanging out on the inside so I'm going to lay the uh, Lexan in there now, I think. I've tried to clean out around the edges the best I could. Um, also, my word of advice is I need to wipe this one a little bit more. Um, not as much uh, silicone as I used. I used quite a bit of silicone because uh, one of my biggest fears, or not fears, or pet peeves, is a car leaking. I can't stand a leak. So I always uh, definitely put overkill on it but I mean it's not bad it just was a messy cleanup um, you know but hopefully that should be a watertight uh, this to the body should be watertight and then me sticking foam on here and around hopefully will make it watertight where it channels out uh, down there so let me uh, fit the clean that up then probably go ahead and put my foam in and then fit my uh, Lex in Okay, so here's my thought process on this. Originally, I was going to put the foam seal here, but your screws are going here, so you would be putting pressure and bananaing, bananaing, man, I can't even say that, putting pressure, you know, and pulling the leg sand down over here instead of, um, you know, more likely to crack it. So I figured put the foam here where my screws are going to go so that my screws are pulling through the foam, basically. Um, and this gives it a nice channel for water to hopefully run out of, even though you don't really need to channel. Now I did run this one long because as your water runs off the top of your car, it's designed to go out this little channel right here and then, uh, you know, go straight down. But yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do for right now. If this doesn't work, then I can always rip it out, but my screws are definitely going to be all the way in here. I don't know. I'm kind of learning as I go. Y'all are literally watching this, and uh, we'll see how this works, because this, if this works, then this this is an awesome way to do a street car and flush mount Lex in and get a watertight seal if this works. So uh, I'm going to lay my Lex in on there. I'm going to time lapse this probably and check the fitment to the body and see what that's looking like, and uh, I'll get back with y'all. All right, so yeah, them little half inch screws ain't gonna work. So here's my quality control piece that I made. So all it is is aluminum with a piece of foam 
and then a scrap piece of leg sand. So as you can see, that's what it will look like with your leg sand and your metal, okay? And then you can squish it down some to make sure you get a nice seal, but even squish just a little bit, you know, squished a little bit as a half an inch. So I like to have three quarter screws that way and it's fully, or let's see here, when it's fully relaxed, it's at five eighths. So three quarters would be pretty cool because then in the low spots, it should grab. So around your perimeter, it's pretty much, you know, without putting much pressure on it, it's pretty much flush. Some areas do dip down below it. So areas that are lower, you'll have to kind of pull it in a little bit, but even all the way around it, it's, it is below it just a little bit. Um, the only way you could take care of that, I don't know if I want to, because right here, I don't know. The only way to take care of that would be to run another piece of foam around there, and I just don't know if I want to do that right now. Um, you could definitely go ahead and drill it like this, and if it bothers you later, you could take it back apart and then run another piece of foam, foam to lift this out just a little bit, but I want to kind of, I think, leave it like that, because that won't bother me if it's like that. I mean, it's pretty freaking close. You know so anyway i'm gonna see if i got some screws laying in the cabinet just to get some in it for tonight all right so we're laying out the screw holes and here what we got you can use your white side of course to lay out your screw holes on and i've been working on my white side up the whole time make sure you don't flip it back and forth and get confused but this is one of the most important parts i believe especially on a black car because your stainless steel screws screws are really going to stand out from a mile away so you want them to look equally spaced. So here's how I do it. And I could be wrong, but this is what makes sense to me. So I measured from here to here. I think I got an inch and a quarter or something. I don't even remember what I got, but that's what I went and did some control marks like we did around the perimeter. Okay, I drew my perimeter like we talked about earlier in the video. I didn't mess up right here, but I know what's going on. That's all that matters. And then I measured from here, which there would definitely be a screw in the center, to here, because there would definitely be a screw in the center, and I divided that in half, and that come up with my center point, okay? C is your center point. And then you take that calculation and divide that in half, so you're gonna split this in half, you come up with that center point, which is 12 and 3 eighths, okay? So then from there to there, that's gonna be 12 and 3 eighths, because that's centered, okay? And then you split the 12 and 3 eighths in half right here so you split the 12 and 3 eighths in half and I got 6 and an eighth so then that tells you from there to there is also going to be 6 and an eighth so basically that's 6 and an eighth 6 and an eighth 6 and an eighth 6 and an eighth that's what it should be um, do the same thing across your your top now I freehanded the corners I just put them where my eyes look like they should be um, I'm sure you could probably get more technical off the top of my head tonight I don't know how you would do it i mean i guess you would do something crazy with finding the center of the radius but anyway i winged it and i measured from here to here split the center split the center split the center so you get it and then of course the same thing on your other side from that corner to that corner screw split the center and then split that in half and then that goes center right there so there is where all my screws are going to be all the way around it. So now all I got to do is drill the holes through them and taper them, which I don't think I'm going to taper them tonight because um, my screws are too short. So I'm going to go to the hardware store in the morning and get the correct uh, ones and I'm going to check my taper on my uh, another piece of my control. So you can see right here, I've already done, you see that taper. So I've already played with these taper bits that I got from Harbor Freight, which I'll show you. But that puts some taper so that it's close to flush mount in the screws. And these are the bits I got. This is what it looks like. This is what the big one looks like. Okay. They're like a self-cleaning tapered. And this is actually an 82 degree bit. So from my research, most of your wood screws are 82 degrees. So you can see right there it says design for an 82 degree cutting. Okay. And that's your cutting dimensions listed above. Um, there's your different sizes up here. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. A lot of you ordered the race car kits, um, you know, with a specialty. They have the cages around them for, uh, so that you can control the depth. They are really nice. 
Uh, I wanted to do this this weekend and not wait on it. The prices are not bad on them at all. I just literally wanted to do it this weekend. So I went to Harbor Freight and got these. So they're self-cleaning. They cut right here and then it brings the uh, you know trash out this side. Um, but you just got to pay attention to your degree of your taper on your screw. So if you look at this, and actually I was looking at these earlier. Let's see here. So two about the same size. And then I've got some nice trim screws. Let's use the car for a workbench. Let's see if they'll lay on here without rolling. Okay. So you see the taper differences? You can definitely see that these two screws have different tapers on your head right here. Okay, where your head's at, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the tapers. So when you are putting screws in Lexan from everything I have read, and y'all can definitely correct me on this stuff if I'm wrong because I'm definitely learning. I literally was laying in bed, um, putting in a lot of hours researching all this. And from everything that I have learned is you got to pay attention to the taper because when you, if your uh, uh, taper that's in your Lexan, okay, if it's wrong, then basically the screw won't be uh, mating up to the taper perfect and it'll be putting pressure where it shouldn't be. You want your mating surfaces where the screw meets up to the Lexan, you want it to be, um, you know, perfect in the same, the same degree angle that way it pulls equally down on the lexan so that's something i learned that i didn't know about and you can just screw straight through it and put a button head normal screw on it but i didn't want to do that because i wanted to try to you know make it look flush mounted um, but i'm at least going to go ahead and flip it over and y'all have seen tons of videos on, i'm sure if not you can look it up uh, flip it over and do the same thing draw out your border of what you want so your border on the back side is going to be from here to here so you're going to draw that width on here which should be about like that wide and then you're going to scribe it and then you're going to peel this off and then that's going to leave the film in the center and then you're going to spray paint spray paint around the outer band on the back side so that way when you look through this side you don't see none of that because it's painted on the back side making it look like it has a nice professional black uh, trim even though this stuff is pretty um, tinted you can still see through it see that's what we don't want to see so we want to paint the back side basically come on this side so if this is your white side then you want to come on this side and use the blue film is what I'm going to do uh, to cut it and then peel it you know basically use it as masking and paint the outside perimeter so I'm gonna do that right now and let it dry overnight I guess I will spray this outside it's probably like freaking 30 degrees out there but um, peel that off and then let that dry overnight. That way I can handle it tomorrow and it'd be nice and nice and dry. Chunk it up there, drill holes, chunk it up there, uh, transfer the holes in there. And you're gonna wanna put your holes in your leg sand first, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and taper it and everything on the table. And then I'm gonna put it up here and then I'm gonna transfer my holes through. through. Okay, so what I ended up doing was my control points, which is where you measure from here to here and you put random dots all the way around your perimeter and then you connect the dots, you know, you hold your hand on there and pull your line. But then I was like, you know what? My line is a little squiggly because I'm going off of the end of this, which isn't perfect. Um, so I decided to put down yellow tape. Um, I can mask basically. If you have a control point here, control point here, control point here, okay, you get the picture all the way around. You touch the tape there, and then you just kind of pull it straight, hit it to that line, pull it straight, hit it that line, pull it straight, hit it that line. And you do have a natural curve, so it has to curve with you as it goes, you know. And then you have your Sharpie on here for when you drew it with your hands, so you can swing that. But then down there, you know, this one kind of sweeps in like this, so you just hit your control points. Same thing as if you're when you're pinstriping a car or something like that. So the painters will understand if you're not a painter then I'm just telling you, if you can figure this out, this is probably gonna be your best way to do it because uh, that tape will naturally pretty much go straight between two points. So you don't want your points too close together. You know, you want them far apart, but you don't want them so far apart that you make a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, you see what I'm saying? Um, you want them where you can hit enough to follow the curve, but allow your tape to make the line and then just run your razor blade around the perimeter and then all you'll do 
is you'll come back and now we're just going to peel the plastic off okay remember this is on the back side the inside of the window so we're going to go around peel the plastic off where we've scribed it so this still has the protective sheeting over it this has nothing we're going to spray paint this perimeter around this that way when you flip it over now you have your black border and you can't see through it so i'm gonna peel this off and then i'm gonna rattle can this we're not even gonna go outside it's too freaking cold to do this i'm gonna just roll with it in here and try not to get high and go in for tonight and hope that there's not too much overspray on my car so this is the type of stuff that i'm telling y'all don't do like i do you know don't do it inside right beside your car for some reason i'm just an idiot that doesn't care about anything i have it seems like i just don't feel like being outside and sometimes paint can do funky crap when it's outside and there's a lot of moisture in there so that's all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go around hit this a couple times let it dry um you know make sure shine a light on it make sure it has good coverage and then let it dry overnight and then uh, I'll be back in the morning and i just thought about it man it's 10 o'clock and i still gotta go freaking edit y'all a video because today's friday y'all had one for tonight but you ain't got one for saturday night so i have to edit you a video i can't remember which one it's gonna be oh yeah it's gonna be randy's um painting his front end but you would have already seen that by now but i gotta go get a shower and edit a video still so it's gonna be another midnight but i'll catch y'all tomorrow all right so it's the next morning and here's what we got got it all painted so now all we got to do is take our tape peel our tape off along with the plastic coating that we used to mask okay so now you can see how we basically just use that as masking tape to get the border around. And I did go ahead this morning real fast before I started filming and, and drill your holes. So I got fingerprints all over the backside of the tape. But yeah, what I actually want to do real fast before I set it is I want to peel this back and countersink all my holes so that I can push my screw through. And basically your screw is just free hanging. Okay, it'll just go through like that. And then you can check your countersink to see if it needs to go deeper or not until you get every single one of them flush. That way, when you put it on the car and you drill your hole through the aluminum first, then you don't have to keep tightening it down and then backing it back out, tighten it down, backing it back out to get the countersink right. Uh, if you go to Jerry, uh, uh, Jerry Bickle's race cars, they actually have a real nice one that sets the depth for you. Um, with the cage around it so you don't go too deep but mine you know like we went over mine's just gonna be the harbor freight ones so i set mine myself and mine will actually end up looking like this hole i did this one this morning then we're the two or three from yesterday this one is how big mine will actually be so i'm gonna just go around and do all my countersinks first and get all my depths of my countersinks correct and then i'll put it in the car and drill uh one at a time And she's scratching the car. My car has so many scratches in it. Y'all have no clue. This camera does wonders. Anyway, so there's the back glass. So there's how it looks. I got a couple things that I need to go back and change. Um, but overall, I'm extremely, extremely happy, especially for uh, the price and everything. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty flush. You can see where I made a mess with some of that silicone that's what i said on y'all's is don't use quite as much as i did but it's not far down below the uh the body line at all so it's pretty it's pretty flush mounted as you can see um it's not too wavy this over here is more flush mounted in the center right here than it is here it's really thick over here for some reason 
at the ends so it's up a little bit more but even then it doesn't stick up above the uh the quarter panel or anything so that's the finished product that's how it looks wiped it all down cleaned it up pretty decent all the edges are nice and flush the only thing that i should have done is went bigger with my banner so that's my gray seal that you can see but besides that all the rest of the areas my banner actually covers it's just the corners see my gray seal so what i probably should do and technically i should probably make it in a little bit more so that it's more center like this it's hard to see with the lighting but you can see my banners like right here my screws here versus my screws on the edge of my banner there and there so i need to go back and widen the side banners you know like that on both sides but it's not bad at all so curious to see what it looks like in the sun but that's the back window uh, i have a ton of time in this thing man it is crazy to get it where it looks like that it, uh, i'm not going to show the front glass because the front glass is literally going to pretty much be the same as the back glass of course you got to pull your moldings pull your glass make a template do everything all over again um, the only, you know, the only thing with the front glass is a little more curved, but basically it's the exact same thing that you did on your back glass. You just do it on the fronts. I will do a video on the quarters. If I do the quarter windows, because they are going to be uh, different. Uh, supposedly one guy said that this glass actually slides out of this track and then you have to build an aluminum track for the bottom to hold the Lexan in it. So if that's the, if I do do these quarters and don't leave them glass, then I'll do a video on that and I'll do a quick video uh, or basic video on the side windows. Side windows should be pretty easy. All they should be is pull your glass out, trace it, put it back in um, the exact same way it come out and hopefully retain it. But that's the back glass. Hopefully that helps somebody if you're looking to put Lexan in your car and you want to build an aluminum frame, aluminum track to go around it. That way your screw holes are not so close to the edge causing your Lexan to crack like a lot of cars, um, a lot of cars are. All right, so we're gonna see how much this weighs. The wife said 35 pounds. That's not right. That is 19.8. Do it again. Hold on. Just make sure we're right. 19.8. Now let's lay it down though, just to make sure we're reading the same. 19. Let me move it. 19. So basically 19 pounds out of the car by just taking the glass out. So that is 20 pounds. There's no way that's not. Between all of your uh, trim, which don't weigh nothing hardly, but your rubber gasket and all the Buell tape that's in there, that's, that's a solid 20 pounds all day long by taking that out. Now, how much does this weigh? I don't know, but it's definitely next to nothing. I mean, all it is is an aluminum ring, basically, and the Lexan. That's it. Okay, so now that we have made it through this install, make sure you smash that notification button to turn on notifications because the next video I'm going to drop is going to be pointers and advice along with tips and tricks on installing this that I learned from doing this back glass and working on the front one right now, which I'm currently filming the front window and tips and tricks video basically because I didn't want to just cover the whole install of the front window when we already did that on the back. Make sure you turn on notifications so you catch that video before you actually go out there and cut your legs hand up.